Hi guys, welcome to another exciting tutorial where we continue to explore Phase 3D. We'll try to go a little deeper in understanding Phase 3D and learning some advanced modeling techniques. If you're ready, let's get started. So here's our image, and first thing we need to do is we need to separate foreground from the background in Photoshop. And I'll tell you why later. So for now, let's just do exactly that. I'm going to select our lion here with object selection tool. That's great. And I'm going to select the rock under the lion. I'm going to do it with quick selection tool. I'll increase my brush size holding alt and right clicking start selection. By the way, if you didn't know, if you accidentally selected some other area, you can just press Alt and left click to fix that. I also want to select those bushes there. Alt, left click to fix. Select this one. Okay, I think that's enough. Now I'm going to select and mask. And I'll choose on black here in the view section. And also I'll set opacity to 100%. This way it's easier to see all the changes. And I'm also going to refine hair. Excellent. You can pre-clean using brush in those areas where you think it's necessary. Also, let's refine these bushes. Okay, great. Now I'll make a mask from selection and I'm going to save it as PNG. I'm going to name it and save it. Awesome. Now we have a foreground. I'll go a few steps back, so now I need to erase the foreground. Go to Select, Modify, Expand. I'll set 40 pixels here. See? Now that I've expanded Selection and deleted the foreground, there's no artifacts left. So hit Delete and OK. We can also pre-clean this thing with Clone Stamp. Press Alt to take a sample and just draw. I'll erase the grass in the foreground just so that it, it doesn't get distorted in animation. Okay, that's enough. Let's save. All right, so now we have both foreground and background as separate images. So now I can select and drag them into After Effects. 
Open Map Manager and Face 3D. First, let's create depth map for the foreground. Download map. There it is. Now let's just edit it very quickly. I'm going to use curve to emphasize the details. And of course, I'm going to increase the blurriness. All right, I'll make it 3D. I'm going to name it. Now let's see if I should scale it along Z. Actually, no, I should even bring it down a little. Okay, great. Now let's get to the background part. Now you see, if I created the model without separating foreground from the background, we would have much less control over the camera movement. But now we have two separate models in space with independent controls each. So like before, I'm going to open the map manager and I'm going to drag the background image to there. Compute depth. And download the map. I'm going to make it 3D. Change its name so that it doesn't replace the, the previously created model. Okay. And now let's scale it along Z right away. Good. Then select the model, copy it, and move it to the first comp. Very nice. So now we have it all in one composition. I think I should also scale the background. Okay, great. Now I'll adjust position of our lion there. And that's it. Let's just animate our camera now. You can also bring down the horizon if you want to. Okay, good. Let's animate with camera target. You can see that it's in the center of the comp. And this means that when we animate, we'll rotate around the entire scene, not around the line. So this way you can also get a, a nice animation, but if you want to rotate around the lion exactly, then you should move the camera target closer to the lion, like so. I'm just going to adjust the position using camera tool. That's Alt, middle click. Okay, let's add keys on Y rotation. I'll go to the third second and set value to 18. Move closer. Let's see. What do we do with the edges of the environment? Well, let's just scale it along X. Nobody's going to notice it anyway. Okay. So let's pre-render and take a look now. Well, what do you say? Looks perfect, I think. So that's it, guys. Using this technique, you have certainly much more control over your footage, and you can do a lot of wonderful things. Here, take a look at another example created with this technique. And in some cases, it's not even necessary to make a 3D background. Actually, in most cases, you can simply put a 2D background behind a model. Here, have a look at this scene. It's just a 2D background behind a 3D model. See? And it's still great. 
So go practice and improve your skills. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.